Give that up to us, heaven. Let's go ahead and bless his holy name. Let's thank him for his goodness, for his love, for his faithfulness. For we serve a good God, we serve a kind God, we serve a faithful God. Lebango sabra gatendo shaka nige redi ne membre gedish sebrendo katresko praktika brundeling rabdo kaprakto kramenambra hexti koshko proso brame mene brendele prota librante kala ratida le prato keresko ske prato kombre shavante le bashanda matila e prato kora bashambe kele rosiata in Jesus name we pray. We're going to pray from the book of Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to pray from the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is a prayer. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18. V verse 18 says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height. And to know the love of God is it to know the love of God which passes knowledge. And that we may be filled with the fullness of God. The prayer you want to pray is that you will know the love of God in a way that is past knowledge. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray that we will know the love of God. That I'm praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and everyone in this service, everyone, including myself, that we will know the love of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. The final prayer we're going to pray is going to be for this month. This is our first Sunday. This is our first Sunday. And we're going to pray that prayer from the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9. The Bible says this. Oh, wow. Maybe let's read from verse 7. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says... Who art thou? Let's read together. I want to go. It says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and it shall bring forth the headstone. Therefore, with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Hallelujah. 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 Look at verse 9. Let's read verse 9 together. Verse 9 says, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. It's a prayer of thanksgiving that that which the Lord has started is completed this month. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice, let's go ahead and bless him. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. It's a prayer of thanksgiving that that which the Lord has started is completed. For that which the Lord has started is completed. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, I, I want to give us more directions about this. It's one thing to pray and say, Lord, I want to do this. But our instruction from heaven this month is that we're going to, we're, we've already started from June the 1st on 21 days of Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? We're thanking God for what he has done that we have not seen. So some of you are praying for an appointment, but we're going to stop praying. We're going to start thanking God. Some of you are praying for a child. We're going to stop praying. We're going to start thanking God. Some of you are praying for a job. We're going to stop praying. We're going to start thanking God. And see what the Bible says here in verse 9. It says, the hand of Zerubbabel has started it. He will also finish it. It says that you may know. God says, I'm up to it. It says, that you may know. So it's a prayer of thanksgiving. I don't want to, th I don't want to pray about anything. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you because it is done. Are we ready? Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, thank you, Lord, because prayer points have become testimonies. Father, thank you, Lord, because prayer points have become... Thank you, Lord, for the next level prayer conference in the UK. Father, thank you, Lord, because you blew our mind 
with notable signs wonders miracles and healing thank you for everyone that came on the wheelchair on the crutch on the walking stick on the on the seat paralyzed was healed cancer was healed all manners of sicknesses was healed thank you because all manners of issues were resolved supernaturally thank you for the overflowing attendance in the auditorium and outside the auditorium thank you for the power of the holy spirit thank you for excellence in organization thank you for the expansion that we've never seen before thank you for the preaching and the word of god spread across the nations of the world in jesus name we pray and father we thank you we honor you because you only start what you've finished and we just thank you because it is done in jesus name we pray before you have your seat let's shout a huge hallelujah let's shout a huge hallelujah god bless you can have your seat say hello to your neighbor on your right and your left welcome them to church in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen and amen amen praise the lord hallelujah just to let you know um just to let you know um just a couple of announcement number one um 21 days of thanksgiving commenced on june the first this is how we're doing it every day at 1 p.m on social media we'll gather for 10 minutes in thanksgiving and thanking god how many of you have testimonies to share here if you have a testimony to share just raise up your hand let me see have a testimony to share just raise up your hands wow mrs john can you pastor john can you help me get people to fill up this card so that either in this service or next week we can get them to share just raise up your hands because yeah you know we need to do that amen daniel where's to why are you sitting by yourself she's the next service she traveled first service oh she was in first service okay oh because i didn't notice her praise god all right so please just just go ahead and raise up your hands and Please raise up again and they will come to you. All of you online, if you have a testimony to share, you know what to do. Send it to um, the screen. It's just send it there quickly. Send it there quickly. So while we're doing that, yeah. So if you have a testimony to share, the ushers will give you a card. You can write a brief summary and we can do that. And maybe we can just put that format in announcement so that we can have people share testimonies. Amen. All right. So every day from January, June the 1st, we began 21 days of Thanksgiving every 1 p.m. We will gather online doing two things we could pray but the focus is thanksgiving and confessions thanksgiving and what and confessions thanksgiving and what and confessions thank you all of you that are taking the testimony card thank you that's really brilliant you know thanksgiving and confession so join us from tomorrow amen praise the lord hallelujah um i made an announcement earlier i don't know if the churches are still watching or they're watching if they're still watching um we're growing we're expanding and um to god be the glory pastor Dayo Gorombi and his beautiful wife will be moving to to the uk to pastor the uk church that is our pastor that's currently in bagada hallelujah and uh, pastor mayo pastor mayo and his beautiful wife will move from ikeja church to bagada church yeah and we have pastor benga Gwola and his beautiful wife that will help to pastor the ikeja church praise the lord hallelujah amen glory to god hallelujah all of you that are watching our brother half family abroad please I want them to connect to we're starting churches in not london we're starting churches in birmingham we're starting churches in houston you know yeah is she the one from houston she's yes yeah, she's one from canada of course in canada also just because i mentioned canada um next level prayer conference in canada i don't have the dates the dates are out already the dates are out it's in canada and we're preparing it's going to be really powerful and um let me amaze you I heard that we've not, this is the first time I've announced it publicly, but I heard that they just put it up on a link somewhere and 700 people have registered. Yeah, 700 people have registered. It's amazing. So next level prayer conference in Canada, we hope we get a big enough venue to be able to store all of us together. It's going to be really good. Amen. Praise the Lord. So all of you want to share that. And we have watch parties in Toronto, in different parts of Canada. You want to get in touch that we can tell you that. Yes. Two things more. Or two more things um next level prayer conference is in few days time is in literally few days is not it's less than 30 days in the uk 
July the first. July the first will be at Wembley. All of you that have made the shot to come to Wembley, thank you for doing that. But the second thing is that if you have friends that live in the UK or Europe, you can send them the invitation. Some of you wrote down your names. Some of you have not done that. If you want to write down your names to invite your friends to Europe to join Next Level Conference in Wembley, please go ahead and do that. Just encourage them to join. It will be a mighty time of God's power. You know, Next Level is very powerful because as we begin to pray, all of a sudden, you see the cripple walk, the limb walk, the deaf ear, the blind see. Many miracles happen out all at the same time. I think your friends should experience the power of God in this way. So please go ahead and uh, July the 1st. And lastly, our business acceleration course, our business acceleration course is starting in two weeks' time. Yeah. And um, I said something, I said for those that were registered today, we'll give them a 50% off. If you go outside there and the business acceleration course, you'll get 50% off. It's two days of really investing a lot into your business. Four things that will happen when you attend the course. Number one, you have the opportunity to find people that can fund your business. Number two, you get skills, marketing, sales, apart from the anointing, to help you do that. Number three, there's a mentorship that goes on. And number four, you know, and I'm saying so because the people that need this are all of this, all of it are starting businesses. You just need to take this step. This step would really change everything for you. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word of God today? All right, amen. So um, I, I was jumping. Let me make sure I didn't say, I didn't miss anything. So if you go outside there, register for the business attention course today, you will get a 50% discount just for today. All right, and you can do it online. It's a hybrid course. You can do it online. All right, so this month we'll begin to talk about a very powerful to concept the believer's authority. The theme of the flyer is Satan get lost. Let me look at someone and said, it's time to tell Satan to get lost. You know, maybe because of how I was trained, I, I, I get it's very challenging. It's really quite challenging for me when I notice believers that are very focused on evil spirits. Because when you read the Bible, that's not what God promises us. That believers would be, you know, that believers would be our the attention of our Christianity will be on evil spirits. That's not what God was promises us. So, you know, you know, sometimes when you, when you listen to Christians, it seems as if the Christian life is so powerless, you know. It seems as if Christian life is so, just one minute. The ushers at the back, you know, and the greatest there, you guys are doing a great job distracting me, you know, with all the things you're doing, you know. A very great job to distract me. So help me tell them, you know. They can't even hear me. They are laughing and talking to one another. So, someone from the media department, let me tell them that I'm talking to them. Thank you. All right. So, praise God. Yeah, so back to the teaching. So, you know, when you read the Bible, you see how people did powerful things. But today in Christianity, it's different. You will see people, you know, sometimes I check my inbox, um, what do they call it? I have marine spirits, I have this, and I say, are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. How does a born again Christian have marine spirits? Then you see people that say, do you believe in spiritual husband or spiritual wife? I say, why? They say, because I have a spiritual husband. I say, are you born again? You're born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. I thought you were married to Christ. And when you begin to tell them this thing, say you don't understand my family background, that there's a foundational problem in where I came from. You know, that that's the foundational problem. And what it is really is that most Christians over time do not understand the authority that they have in the name of Jesus. And during the course of this teaching, we will teach, you know, on this authority. Why are Christians afraid of demons? Why are Christians afraid of demons? I remember when I was younger, you know, <laughs> listen, you don't want to bring people that demon possess near me because I will make a mockery of them. I remember when I was younger, um, there was this thing reading that time, this group, OPC. And OPC was known for their metaphysical power to withstand gunshots. So, they became very popular. Actually, around where I grew up, you know. And I remember that they would, um, they would say, secure by OPC, then they would put some red cloths, and that means nobody could touch it. 
So one time I wanted to go through a path. They said, oh, you see, I locked it. I said, what's the lock? This is red cloth with Cowley. I said, come on, I'll remove it. What's, 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 my, what's my business with red cloth and Cowley? If they need Cowley, they should go to the sea and pick up, pick up Cowley. So are you not afraid? I said, how can I be afraid of demons? Afraid of demons? Don't you know who I am? I'm seated above principalities and powers. They are not even principalities and powers. They are messengers. But where, how did we get to a place where we become so afraid? I remember one of my friends was sharing this, Brother Talks. And uh, he said, there's a guy when he was younger also that used to do magic. He would take, he would take knife or blade and would cut himself and it would not bleed. So people really respected him. So one day, someone now told him that this guy, so he was in the area. He said, this guy could do it. So again, I said, I can do it. That no, nothing can cut me. And it shows they understand their own power. So you know what he said? He said, okay, that's fine. He said, whatever blade you want to use. So he brought the blade. He cut him. He said, it didn't work. He said, but the talk said, give me the knife. He said, it didn't cut him. He took the knife. Right in front of him. He said, that spirit of darkness that's made this blade ineffective. It's time to take your hands off. That the metal let it walk as it should walk. He said, as the guy took the knife to cut, he saw himself bleed. See, there's power in this thing. You know, if your Christianity is about, we come to church on Sunday, wear a nice dress, you are not getting the crux of Christianity. I, I remember when I was growing up, my mother was a big time trader. So they used to have a lot of cash. You know, when we were growing up those days, there was no transfer, ATM and bank transfer. It was a lot of cash. They used to have a lot of cash. So, you know, I used to help out in the store once in a while. And they had, you know, the way they did was that they had this cash box. How many of you had parents that traded and you knew about this cash box? Did you know have cash box? Some of them still have it today, but cash box. But this time was, you know, now there's transfer. That time the only option and the biggest note those days was 29. So there was this big cash box. So, you know, one, before I got born again, I've noticed in that cash box, there's this white thing that with a ribbon tied round, 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 round. How many of you know that concept? You know that thing? Who know? Oh, you know it. You saw it. Oh, fantastic. This white thing tied with a ribbon. So eventually, when I got born again, I became curious. So I asked my mom what this was. My mother said, it's nothing. Leave it there. Because you know the way mothers are. They don't want it to interrupt. Okay. So eventually, I, I got to ask my aunt. And my aunt said, oh, that that thing is a, it's not a charm, but it's a charm. Hmm. Look, born again are here. You have something in your hands as a charm. It's a charm. Oh. The thing with charm is that it will invite evil spirits. So, a charm. So, it's a charm. Oh, wow. So, the charm is there. I said, but he said, why is it not a charm? He said, because it doesn't do something to other people. It's for the, he said, some people use bad money. Like, there are these notes, narrow notes that have demonic invest, investiture on it. So, when they put the money there, that it, the money can disappear. It can ruin the business. So, the charm is a protective charm to make sure that if they spend that money to you, nothing will happen. Ah. I said, that's why they put it there. I said, Ah, my mother needs charm to protect her. When me, mobile power house, I'm here. I just took it and threw it away. Ah, I said, the money, I sanctify you. Because we, we have power, but our power comes through words. I sanctify you. And there was never an occurrence that money disappeared. So the question is this. The question is, why do some Christians live in the perpetual fell of evil spirits? Some of you, they take light right now. You're always afraid. Why do some Christians live in the perpetual fell of spirit husband and spirit wife? And some say they have curses. Some say they have marks. Where is the authority the Bible talks about? Where is the power the Bible talks about? You now see Christian going from mountain to mountain for deliverance. I thought the Bible says we were delivered. I thought the Bible says we should cast out devils. We are the one looking for persons to cast out devils from us. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go very fast. Ephesians chapter 1. Oh, glory to God. Yep. Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 15. Someone say hallelujah. He said, wherefore also ahead of your faith, 
and love for unto the saints, cease not to give thanks to you, making mention of you my prayers, verse 17, why? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I'm going to come to this later on. He says, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is. So, he says, in the saints, he says, for the saints there is inheritance. I love this. Okay, let's keep going on. He says, and what is the exceeding, oh my God, you need to watch the word. He says, you know, English can lack words sometimes. You know, some, you know, let me speak your a little. Why you want to say that? How do you say it in English? I love you strong. You know, because English can be limited. Like, you know, call me. You know, how do you say it in English? Your love is deep inside. You, you see the thing? English can be limited. So, when you hear this kind of translation, you understand the limitation of English. See what the Bible says here. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, what is the exceeding greatness? It doesn't make all the exceeding greatness. It's in the power is so strong, we can't comprehend it. So, you know what he did? He now needed to use something to describe the power at work in us. He said the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. See what it says. He said the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to... See, in English it doesn't make sense. See what it says. The exceeding greatness of power towards us according to his mighty power. How do you use power to power? Because he was saying the power was enormous. Then he began to explain it. He said this was the power which was wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him down. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This scripture is just running me wild in the spirit. Hey. He says, he says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right side in heavenly places to show you what to do you know what he says he said where is heavenly places he said far above principalities and powers might and dominion these four names are ranking in spirit realms i'm going to we're going to talk about spiritual ranking this month you are going to understand spiritual legislations you are going to understand when, when, when people say they are you know when people say they are witch doctors that's why you must understand things like Babalawos are the lowest on the ranking. You know why? The reason why is that Babalawos don't even know anything. They can't do anything. For them to do, they have to go and consult. Is Their power is in access. Their power is authority. You know, they don't really have their own power. So the Bible says this. He says that far above, it says far above principalities, powers, dominion, and might. And see what's it. And he has, oh wow. And he has put all things, what? The next verse. He has what? Verse 22. And he has put on things on the what? And gave him to what? Let me get to volunteer. Chisum, come. Bring, it, bring your chair when you're coming. He said, he's seated. We are seated far above. You are Christ. Christ, right? Thank you. Chisholm, don't sit down. I didn't say sit down. Please capture Chisholm on camera. Yeah. Chisholm is seated. Chisholm is Christ, right? Far above that and past. He's seated. Chisholm, but the Bible says, is the head, right? Let your head sit. Let your head sit. Just make your head sit. Okay. Your head cannot sit. Sit. For him to sit... For the head to see, the body must sit. We are the body. Are you getting this? Then you know what he put the devil? He didn't put the devil under the head. He put him under the feet. Who is the feet? You are the feet. 
See, see verse 22. I, this is very powerful. He says in verse 22, and he has put, oh my God, he has put all things under his feet. Why did he say under his head? He wants you to know you are the one that has the authority. He has put all things under the feet because Christ is the head. The body is the church. Everything is put under the feet. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. If you understand this, you will understand you're a mobile powerhouse. Ah, uh, I'm a mobile powerhouse. See, you listen, there's no need for you to be afraid of demons. The reason why I say Bible says we are far above. If you have a message for Satan, put it under your shoes. You didn't get it. You will get it now. If you have a message for Satan, do what? Put it under your shoe. Why? That's where he is. Under your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks. Stand up. These are Christians pray. I pray. Pray that God would you want to know God more. Deeper in the things of God, Father. I want to know you more. Deeper in the things of God. I said, now we want to bind demons. Ha! See, if you know the word of God. If you were praying like this before, Father, I want to know you, I want to. When they say it's time to bind demons, you go and sit down. This is the one I do without least stress. Why? Because I'm seated. I have authority. You, you will cross your leg. <laughs> you will cross your leg. That's why the Bible says, he, the demons told the man. He said, Jesus, I know. He said, Paul, I know. You are known in hell. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So the question is this. You can take the chair. Thank you, sir. The question is this. Why do Christians live a powerless life? The reason why is that most of us are not aware of the authority we have in Christ Jesus. That's the major thing. And the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, it says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. I remember, I mean, I can tell you many, many stories. Because even me, I've been a victim of no ignorance. You know, the good, thing about, the good thing about my upbringing was that I began to grow up in the things of God from a very young age. From what? A very young age. I remember when I was in uh, form four, class four. Is that class four, class five? I can't remember. I think it was class four. There's this girl, I can't even remember her name. I just pray that she doesn't watch this video, you know. Her name is Abiola. That, it was a Saturday after, afternoon. We were doing fellowship. And just, as we were just closing fellowship, she said, ee, 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 ee. you know, she, she began to demonstrate. As she began to demonstrate, ah, then they called for the elders of the fellowship. Yours sincerely. <laughs> Yours sincerely. Where, I know, even with the elders, we used to sit at the back because the way we used to pray, the range in prayer, others could not take it. So, about five, about 10, 15 of us, we just closed fellowship and said, so we just came. Cover you. And those days when you are spiritual, you don't walk normal. You don't walk normal. The spirituality makes you bounce. You know, you, all of it that God born again is saying, this, this, this. You don't, you don't walk normal. You just say, you with a big Bible. Oh. Shut up. They just took the girl to the front, put her there. They say, join your hands together. Ha. Oh, yeah. They say, oh, yeah. Fire prayer. Ah, all everybody, braga, hey, yeah, bra, hey, hey. <sighs> you know what happened? That prayer we started around 5 30 p.m. We were there till 1 30. The demon did not leave. I'm telling you my own personal story. As we we're casting out, the girl was just like this. Someone just said, She has tied the prayer with her leg. So, so as she tied, then the other person. This was just molestation, I'm telling you. You know, someone would just be trying to take her leg, then I scared to show someone. No, the clothes is scared. You know, he would close his head. As we, as we untie the leg, then he would tie the hand this way. She, she tied the prayer with her hand, so another brother would hold the hand, hold the hand. I'm telling you the truth. This is real story. So, many of you that think I don't understand deliverance, you, you, I've been there. Then they get it like this. Then she has tied it with her hand. Hey. We went... 6 30, 7 30, 8 30, 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, 12 30, 1 30. Then they, they, at one day, the, the girl just got angry. Hey! He said, You, you are trying to cast me out. You know, I know your sister. I will catch her. I will catch her. 
The brother that was a prayer warrior said, Ah, oh, please, please. He said, Please, don't catch my sister. Please, don't catch my sister. The thing is that once you don't know how to do this, you don't know how to do this. Ah, as she said that, me, I just already, I just bam. I was not in sight because, ah. <laughs> because I had seniors. I, if the seniors, I could see the fear in the seniors because they were, the, I could see the fear in the seniors. I said, if these all of them were Jim Jim, are running backward, what, 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 where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Son of man. <laughs> wow. We were there for several hours. We couldn't remove the demon. Didn't we have the power? We had the power and authority, but we didn't know what we had. And that's why I'm teaching you this today. You know, once you, it's the way authority works with knowledge. Authority works with knowledge. That's why the Bible says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Where there is ignorance, authority cannot be emphasized. So, as we talk about the believer's authority, let me tell you what will happen. I would release spiritual knowledge. That's why Paul was always praying that they would know. They would know. Satan is an idiot. Tom can never say that. Pastor, I don't want to understand trouble. Though. You see, for you to say that, you are already under the fear of Satan. Because if you know Satan, he's so wicked, you don't have to look for his strength to attack you. The Bible tells you what it does. It says, the devil is like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. You don't have to do bad for him to attack you. I mean, we were there for several hours. But I learned something that day that I didn't know how to cast out demons. Then some years after, eventually we got someone else to cast out the demon. And it was just in a matter of minutes, the demon was gone. And that was maybe the next week. Because it was, hey, it was, hey, hey, that, that night was challenging. You know, I remember when it was 1.30, they had to close the guest hostel. So they had to tell us that no matter the demon casting we're doing, she has to go back to the guest hostel. So I said, let's tell the demon to be freeze. I said, that's a good concept. That's, that's a good concept, to freeze. So we freeze. They said there's a spiritual box camp. You know, all those useless books you read about demons freezing, you know. And eventually we did the same thing. I said, if the demon did not come out, how will they obey you to freeze? Just common sense. Wow. Eventually, a few years after, I went to preach in the Redeemed Church. And the pastor called me about this. It was a, it was a great Redeemed Church. And there was this leader. And, you know, not to reduce anything because it doesn't matter the church is not great. That's not what I'm saying. Don't take it out of context. And the leader spoke to me about this lady. She's a worker in church, one of the top workers. He said that she's dated about maybe five or something relationships. I can't remember again. And every time she dates, I think about two or three of them have an engagement. They broke up the engagement. And what will happen is that she would look, they will see her like a lion. And that lion will attack their parents, attack something. They will see the lions that start attacking them. So I asked the lady, what do you know about the lion? He said, it's true. Because I also see them. Ah. I said, are you born again? He said, I am. That I'm the head usher or something like that. Ah! And you belong to Lion's Club. So I said, tell me about the Lion. He said that there are six that I'm the seventh one. He said, when I'm going, there are my three on my right hand that they, they've been, like from when I was raised up, they were given for protection. I said, so why are they attacking me that I want to marry? He said that she doesn't know why. And she doesn't know how to tell them to go. He said, all the, what was he said, our pastor has been praying about it. We've been praying about it. It has not gone. I was tired. So I told the pastor. I was young. I was in my mom's house. I said, bring her to my mom's house. I mean, if you know my mom's house, this nice sitting room, TV is here, chairs on the other side. So by the time they came, by the sending of spirit, I knew what was going on. That was a demonic, it was a demonic oppression. So by the time they came to the house, she stood. So when I say, stand up. The pastor, a pastor brought and I said, Shout. He, had, he was already trying to kneel down to pray. I said, to do what? Because that was a problem with the first time I was casting out the demon. 
You don't pray about demons. You cast them out. You speak to the demon, not to God. So the lady was there. I just looked at her. And I said, you foul spirit of darkness. I pointed at her. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her now. When I said that, this lady is the cutest, nicest face person you see. Like, calm face. Not that I like, I can't do something face. As soon as I said that, just watch me. Just went, Whoa! she roared like a lion. Whoa! Like huge roar and charge towards me. One thought says, run. Another thought said, rebuke it. Then the thought of the last voice of faith says, the devil is putting up a show. He's gone. As she was coming, you know, this was all up in the spirit, in my spirit at the same time. She was just like two meters, like two meters away from me. I just said, Satan, when I say you're gone, you're gone. I said, I'll not repeat it twice. Once I said so, she just went, you, 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 fell under the power. The next time I saw her, the next year she was married. Now she has about two or three kids. See, but the thing is, the, the reason I'm teaching this is that it's good for you to clap for me, but it's not what the, it belongs to the pastor. The authority of the believer belongs to every single Christian. That anybody in Sunday school should be able to do. Your children in kids' school should be able to cast out demons. But the thing is, is you must understand your authority. Look at Galatians, Ephesians 3, verse 20. Are you here? Oh, let's go. Oh, wow. Ephesians 3, verse 20. I remember the great story by, there's this, there was this older musician called Carmen. He used to do the Christian rap. It's an old guy. Gen Z, sorry, you will not know this. You know, you know Carmen? Who knows Carmen here? You know Carmen? Very old rap guy. And one of the stories that Carmen said was that one day he was sleeping and a demon came into his room. I don't know if you remember that he rapped about it. A demon came into his room and the demon moved the chair backward. And when he woke up from his sleep and saw the demon, he said, oh, Satan, I didn't know it was you. And he stepped back. And you know why he stepped back? He said, why am I awake to talk to Satan? He said, what can he do when I'm asleep? Nothing. He stepped back. Then when he woke up again, he saw that the chair had moved from here to this place. So he woke up and I said, ah, he said, come back, Satan. I don't know how you moved it from here there. But I put my chair back here. You will not give me an assignment to do. The same way you moved it from here there, move it back from there here. I'm telling you how you can be distinct in believer's authority. And I said, they, they beat me my dream. Beat who? You know, for, for, for you people to think they can beat you. They beat who? Are you their mates? Where did they even find you? I thought you are far above prophets and powers. The problem is bad teaching brings bad belief. Someone said they gave me food in my dream. Where would they find me to give me food? You see, the only people that feed me my dreams are angels. If I eat in my dream, it's only an angel. Because first of all, Satan is so stingy to feed you. If you see someone fighting for your food in the dream, that's Satan. Read the Bible. Every time someone was fed, it was an angel. The angel told Peter, arise and eat. The angel told Elijah, eat. He was always giving them food. Where in the Bible did Satan give you food? It's religion that says once you eat in your dream, Satan has given you food. And because you believe it, you become a captive of your belief. Hey, you ate poison. And because you believe it, it now becomes poison. Because Satan knows you believe that rubbish. I said, you don't understand. You know, when some dreams you have, you need to wonder what pastor have I been listening to? Where have, what have I been watching? Because if you hear this kind of things, there are some dreams you can never have. You, in your dream, you're always fighting, fighting, fighting. You listen to too much of nonsense about demons. Someone say Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, quickly. Verse, verse, um, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 
Ah, oh, oh. F chapter 3 verse 19. The Bible says, and to know the love of God, which passeth knowledge. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That ye may be filled like, with the fullness of God. Ah, what does that mean? That I will have the full load of God inside. I, I carry the full load of God. So when you say I ate in the dream, they flogged me. They flogged someone that has the full load of God in his inside. What are you drinking? He says that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Ah, I'm a mobile powerhouse. I'm filled with the fullness that hey, 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 hey. listen to me. I'm filled with the fullness of God. Where can demons stay? I'm full of God. There's no place for demons. Now look at the next verse. The Bible says this. But now unto him that is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. Where I'm going to the next line. Look at the next line. According to what? Where is the power? Where is the power? Oh, at work. Where? See, the power is not in heaven. The power is at work in us. He said, according to the power at work in us. There's power at work in me. There's power at work in me. Someone says, there's power at work in me. There's power at work in me. Glory to God. Oh, wow. I don't know how far we can go today. There's power at work in me. There's power at work with me. You know, every time something happens, you, you, every time something happens, you're always saying that, Lord, why? I don't understand. There's power at work in me. That's the believer's authority. So what is authority? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Let's talk about what authority and power is. And talk about why we need it. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. There's power at work in me. You're experiencing some kind of delay? Stop looking for prayers. Take authority. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every influence of Satan over my papers, I call it out. Hey, you want to pray? Say, God, God, won't I marry like this? And you keep pitying, you will keep looking at me like this. You see, that prayer is not understood. Because you now have the authority to deal with the delay. Look to the, sorry, look to the thing, verse 19. Let's read. One to go. Behold, I give. Let's read together. One to go. Behold. Uh-huh. Hold on. And over some of the power of the enemy. He says, and over what? All the power of the enemies. You know, some of you, when I meet you, you say, Father, Pastor, you're doing a great job. As you are tying, God will tie food for you. He said, but no, no, no battle that you fought for that will come back to your head. I didn't even say amen to that kind of prayer. This is the reason why. Read it, read it, read it, read it. It says, and over all the power of the man, and what? He says, and nothing. Shalama. He says, someone says, you know, oh wow. One lady in our church came. She, she, she just came newly. She said, Pastor, ah, ah, I did something. I prayed for somebody that had a problem. He said, the next thing, I woke up with an eye problem. He said, I feel as if it's, it's touch and it's, it's transfer. He said, the person is you that have caught the problem. I said, keep quiet. I said, what is transfer? I said, go and sleep. I said, if you, if you can remove it, can't remove it from yourself. I said, go and sleep. Then when I spoke to her, she was challenged. She exercised authority. She came back and said, it just disappeared. I said, because the devil knew you believed in transfer, so he gave it to you. See what he says. He says, when you cast out the devil, he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means it will not come back to you. You are insulated with the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, your family don't marry. He said, my family. He said, that's okay. Zonga plage garada baya. I cancel everything. Why? Anywhere the word of the king is his power. See, I have authority. Let, let me show what authority. What is authority? Authority is delegated power. Yes or no? Power is the ability to do. You know, for example, a chuma come. Yeah. My brother with glasses come. Yeah. 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 Face him. Face him. Yeah. Just give him one punch. Yeah. Yeah. The, what he felt was power. The, because this was power. Power went here and blew, blew, you know, it didn't punch him because if he punched him, he would you saw him move backward. That's power. Power. Once you hit somebody, they feel that's power. That's power. Ability to do. 
What's authority? Let me show you what authority is. This authority. When you see this guy with this badge on his hands and he says, stop. Why do you stop? Because the strong or because of the badge? Talk to me. Because, huh? What is the badge? Authority. The reason why Christians don't exercise authority, they say, I don't look like someone that can command demons. But it's not about what you look, it's about the badge that you carry. It's about what? The badge. And it says in Luke chapter 10, Behold, I give you power. Or the word power that is actually authority. Thank you. Where's my man? My man, come. Oh, wow. Someone say, I have authority. Oh, wow. Look at it. No, no. Come, come, come. Yeah. Come over here. Face us. Tayshan. Uh, look at this guy now. Whatever he tells you to do, you will do. You will do because he's very strong or because of uniform. You have uniform in the spirits. So, this guy now, let, let me, within these two, let, let's look. Let's, let's see who is stronger. Let's see, let's see, let me see. You see, you, this guy, I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> he looks shakeable. Let me look at this guy. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, it looks unmovable. But if this guy, even though he looks tiny, even though he's drunk, in this uniform, looks at this guy and says, stop. They know Bonham well not to stop. That is authority. You may look like this young girl that speaks for me, that doesn't even <laughs> Oh, Father, I thank you. I'll give you praise and glory. But they want to, we'll sit, and, we'll sit and obey this one. But once you say, in the name, <laughs> yeah, yeah. once you wear your uniform, once you wear your uniform, once you are in uniform, it doesn't matter if you have a thin voice or a loud voice. Satan comes trembling. Somebody shout amen. amen. Because you have authority. The problem is that you keep looking at yourself and say, where's the authority? That's the thing. We don't look like it. But once we wear the uniform, we have complete authority. You know something? If Jesus gave us only authority, that would have been good. He gave us something else. He gave us power. Oh, glory. Act chapter 1, verse 8. Give me power. You can go. Act 1. Let, read. Act 1, verse 8. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Act 1, 8. Quickly. Look at it now. Act 1, 8. He said, but you shall receive what? What is power? Ability to do. You don't need to, this one. See, authority talks about the right. Power is that you can perform. Give me power. <laughs> do I have power? Hands up. <laughs> Come here. Hands up. Kneel down. Ah, it's not about my size again. It's the fact that I can do. Because if I just... Bah, you know, the reason... Stand up. Move towards your money. Move now. Move. Is it about my muscle? No. It's that I have power. Listen, God gave us two things. There's one right. And the other one is power that we can do. That's why I told you, I'm a mobile powerhouse, Kabaya. I'm a mobile powerhouse. I'm a mobile powerhouse. You know, some of you here, some of you here, you say, you know, you don't understand what you are, what you have. This, this, this weapon in your spirits. Let me see the tiniest. Who is very tiny in the choir there? Who, who is who, a lady? Give me one of the ladies that just, you know, you know, just there, you know, I can. Give me a musician, one of the tiny, any the musician that is there, that's, you know, what's our basis? Let him come, you know. Yeah, come. Yeah, take the gun. Arrest him. <laughs> the reason I'm saying so, is it about his size? It's about what he carries. What does the Bible say? Acts 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power higher. He said, but ye shall. It's not about my face, my size. It's what I carry on the inside. That ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So he looks tiny, but see what he's carrying. And now he's humble. 
Hallelujah. Please stand up. By the way, it's a, it's a toy gun, you know, just for you to know. Because I'm like, ah, I'm not going to judge, no. Because some of you are very good in social media. <laughs> Praise God. But you should receive power. Oh, what does that mean? Ah, can I show you an example of power? Can I show you an example? Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Act of the Apostles 28, verse 3. Act of the Apostles 28, verse 3. Let me read quickly. <laughs> oh, someone say, I'm a mobile powerhouse. The Bible says this, and, and when Paul had gathered a bunch of sticks and laid up out of the fire, this was Paul the Apostle. The Bible says, when a viper came out of the heat and fastened on him, and the barbarian saw the venomous beast beat him, see, the snake beat him and did not go. He stayed on his hand. You know, snake will bite and go. This one beat him and stayed on his hands. See what the Bible says. Ah. The Bible says, when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang onto his hands, they said, no man is a wanderer, to whom even though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. The Bible says, and Paul shook off the beast into the fire. And read the next line. Lama tokabaya. Sileba lagado. Sangoli bragade da mantayosh. He says, he felt no arm. They say, eh, they, say they, they put me on my seat. My brother, sit down. As you sit and you disarm them. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says he shook up his hands. However, they looked that he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no man come to him, they changed their mind and said, He's a God. This is why you need power. You need to do things that people can know that you serve the living God. One lady got pregnant after prayers. She went back to the home village and showed the grandmother and all the village people that she had had the baby. One of the grand aunties called her. He said, How? He said, I heard you got pregnant. He said, Okay, if you got pregnant, because she had been looking for a child for a long time. He said, Did you vomit the child? He said, Because what we have done for you, you cannot have a child. He said, I went to somewhere where they untied it. Power, sir. This is, this is what you have. Stop saying, I don't know what's going on in my marriage. Is something going on in your marriage? With your delay? Use your mouth and cancel it. Use your mouth and cancel it. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I don't know. Did you, how many of you watched the testimony on Friday? Maybe some of you are locked off. The Friday NLP. Did you watch it? If you did, wave your hands. Let me see. Oh, wow. You need to go back and watch Friday testimony. A lady was on Zoom. She was testifying from London. She said that something happened to her and her stomach just began to grow big. And she's, 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 not, been, she's not sexually active. Doctor said, maybe you're pregnant. I said, I can't be pregnant. I'm not sexually active. She said, and she showed that picture. She was six months pregnant. Six, she looked like a six month pregnancy. And during next level, as I was ministering here, I, I saw it in the spirit. I mentioned her name. You know, I mentioned, look, look, at, look at her. Look at her now. Look at the picture on the screen. I mentioned her name and said, I mentioned where she was and just word of knowledge ministry. I said, I break it off you in Jesus' name. I said, I never told her, I said that your pregnancy is not a fibroid, but the doctors don't know what it is. The doctors in the UK did not know why she was growing in tummy. And it was not a fibroid. She said, after the prayer, something came on her body. Then she went to the restroom. After the prayer, remember she had been seeing doctors for months, no progress. She said, then she began to pass out clots of blood. He said, she passed out four clots of blood, like human hand. He said, as I was passing out, I noticed my stomach was going down, going down. He said, that's how I got up and I told her I was healed. Look at that picture. Do you have the picture of where she was healed? Let me tell you something. Look at the picture. This was when she had, when she was, when she looked pregnant. There's another picture. I don't know if you can get it. Where she, you know. Look at that. The same clothes. Someone say, ha, ha, what the doctors could not treat, that's the power of the Spirit. That power is not exclusive to pastor. It's you that, the thing is that I wanted to, I wanted to, but how do I exercise the power? Knowledge. Last scripture. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Psalm 82 verse. Someone say hallelujah. 
Psalm 82. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 82. Ah, and you went to the hospital and said, that, eh, Sir, your baby is doing one, one way or the other. You say, my baby? You will say, no, I know what to do. I have the authority to do it. I have the power to fix it. Someone telling your office, I will deal with you. You say, I have the authority to do it. I have the power to fix it. There are matters you set in the spirit. So not every matter is English. When you're, not, you're, when you're set in the spirit, you now wear tie and suit. You now do face makeup and wear what they call a shoulder pad and come out. I say, hello, sir. I just came to ask you about that thing. But you set to it in the spirit. In the spirit, you move your fire with power. In the spirit, you move with the power. You know, if you are all this psychedelic Christian, I come to harvest this. I just like the church. It's cool. You are not here yet. Because there's public life and private life. The power is in the private life. We, we release it secretly. You know, you know, <laughs> someone says, what does it look like before you come and preach? I said that, oh, I wake up very early. And before I talk to people, I talk to God. Oh, I, I spend time in the presence of God. Glory to God. Psalm 82 verse 6. See what the Bible says. He says, you are gods. All of you children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like men. Why? Because you don't know who you are. There are some things you need to stop. And how do we stop things? Listen, authority is released through words. We speak. We speak. Why? Anywhere the word of the king is, there's power. I commanded today to stop. This, you know, you will tell yourself this five word, I call it out in Jesus' name. Ah, you, because you have the authority to do that. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Will you command something today? Go ahead and use your authority. Some of you have projects that are stuck. Some of you have health issues that are there. You command it to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and use your authority. Go ahead and use your authority. Go ahead and use your authority. I can hear you praying. 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 Amen. Last scripture, Ezekiel 37 verse 37. Just put it up quickly. This is why we prophesy. I said, life and death and the power of the tongue. Anywhere the word of the king is, there's what power? You use your mouth and command. The biggest deal comes to me. Oh, yes. I call for my marriage. I call for my approval. I call for my job. Use your authority. See what the Bible says. 37 verse 7, not 28. 37 verse 7. This is why you use your mouth. See what the Bible says. He says this. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. And what happened? As I prophesied, there was a noise. As you prophesy today, noise will happen in different quarters. See the next line. And there was what? A shaking. And bones began to come together. Bone to bone. Are you ready, sir? As you prophesy, there will be a shaking. As you prophesy, there will be a noise. In the consulting field, in the oil and gas, in the health, in your body, there will be a shaking. Lift up a voice and prophesy. Lift up a voice and prophesy. Lift up a voice and prophesy. Prophesy. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone here that has a demonic oppression, there's something you can you feel as if it's spiritual. Anywhere you are, as I speak right now, that oppression will cease. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, that oppression of Satan, I command it to be broken. Broken over their health, broken over their marriage, broken over their body, broken over their finance, broken over their lives. In the name of Jesus, loose them now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It's done.